was inching toward the spotlight the entire game, and he grabbed center stage with the first touchdown of his NFL career. Tommy Hodson wasn't about to stop him nor the Buccaneers from taking a 30 to 10 lead. In barely less than five minutes, three New England turnovers led to three Buccaneer touchdowns. The remainder of the game was impression time. Show the coaches something so you can finally unpack the bags. Reggie Cobb reinforced his bid for a starting position, scoring once and finishing with a team high 49 yards on eight carries. From there, head coach Ray Perkins gave a long look to rookies Tony Citizen and Derek Douglas. Citizen rushed for 21 yards while Douglas scored the final touchdown in the Buccaneers' 44-10 preseason victory over New England. And of course, one of the big keys in that ball game, the seven turnovers forced by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, defense, uh, one of the concerns of Ray Perkins. Uh, he's worried about the depth there. So that's one of the problems the Buccaneers will have to solve before they begin this 1990 season. Well, the countdown to kickoff is going to continue live here from the Seattle uh, Kingdom in just a moment. So stay with us. reflected today here at Tampa Stadium as the first nine years of Tampa Bay Buccaneer football came to a close. Nine years of exciting highs and frustrating lows. Through it all, John McKay led these Buccaneers from record-setting losses, 0-26, to record-setting expansion team wins. As John McKay walks off the field for the final time, find a friend and foe like a green accomplishments will rank John McKay as one of the all-time great coaches in America. Everybody lies if they, if they said he wouldn't like to be liked. And I really don't think that I was ever really liked here. You can't touch this. Coming this fall to WTOG. Available at Brandon Auto Salvage, State Road 60, three miles east of Brandon, 689-8131. Welcome back to the King Dome in Seattle, Washington. The fans uh, starting to fill the place right now. It's going to be very loud for the start of this ball game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Seattle Seahawks. Competition has been the buzzword in camp this year the running backs, the linebackers, and what about the wide receivers? Mark Carrier's back, so is Bruce Hill. You have Frank Pel Pillow, Danny Peebles, Willie Drury, also some new guys trying to make this team. Throughout tonight's show, we're gonna take you inside some of the positions, and right now we'll begin by taking a look at those Tampa Bay Buccaneer wide receivers. I've always gone to, on the on the goal as Mark got to go across, he's going to get hit, whether or not he catches the ball or not. So uh, it's my position, that's what I do. Uh, sometimes I have to go across, and I just try to make sure that I'm concentrating on the ball, and uh, when the ball's in my area, I go for it, and not, not concerning about uh, the guy who's behind me who's trying to take my head off. And the main thing is that you are going to get hit regardless, so you might as well just catch the ball. <laughs> so that's something I've learned along the way. Um, concentration plays a big deal for the wide receivers. The tight ends and those inside receivers have to go down through that middle and catch balls, and if you can't do that in this offense, you can't hardly play. There's also a concentration factor on running the route correctly, because there's some routes that take a little patience. Uh, you know, for a Z, you know, my, me and Danny's position, I think it's even more tough, because uh, we have routes in the middle of the field, a lot of routes, you know, where, where big hits can be made. So, like I said, it's a little bit more pressure for us to, for all the Z's, really, you know, to get the job done. You see guys getting ready to hit you. I mean, we're not blind. You know, we have peripheral vision, so we see guys coming to hit us, and, and you have to try to keep your eye on the ball. If you don't like running over the middle, you can't play here because, I mean, we run a lot of stuff, and not just over the middle as far as free safeties go, but we run a lot of stuff over the middle as far as underneath linebackers, so we're going to get hit by some pretty, pretty big guys, but luckily, nobody on our team worries about that. 
Well, welcome back to the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, as we watch the Seahawks get stretched out for tonight's game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Seattle Seahawks. Well, we just had a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneer wide receivers. Now, what about defense and pressure on the quarterback this year? You all know it starts up front with the guys known as the defensive linemen, as Rodney Rice. Uh, we'll count down the kickoff. We'll continue right now. We're going to take a look at those guys that play the defensive line. game's getting better mentally for me. Uh, I think by not going to college, I didn't have a lot of mental toughness. But now it's starting to show that it's getting better because I had five tackles in the game. That's because I had my mind concentrating on, you know, getting to the place I was supposed to be and making tackles. I think we've come tight as a unit, and, you know, it's shown on the field far. You know, we've sort of got a little bit more pressure on the quarterback this year. And uh, we had, you know, players like, um, you know, Ray Seals to come into his own. and. Um, as far as becoming a better player and you know, without the background of uh, college and stuff like that, you know, you just have to get a guy a little credit. And, uh, you know, from that standpoint, it just made us tighter as a group. It's a week by week thing. Uh, you, you face different problems each week. Uh, the, you, the, with the uh, run and shoot now in the league, that's an entirely different set of problems. Uh, the teams that uh, have different pass protections, they have different run offenses. So it's really in training camp, you try to get as much of an overview as you can for what you're going to see during the season, but you don't ever quite make it. It just didn't quite that much time. In my opinion, the defensive lineman have to want it more than the offensive lineman and have to uh, dig a little deeper because they're trying to keep us away from something and we're trying to get to something. So I think we have to uh, strive a little harder and get a little nastier, a little meaner, and keep it fair, but uh, just play tough and play hard. I think we're looking better more aggressive. Uh, the pass rush is getting better, but I think, you know, in two weeks' time, we're really going to, you know, by the time we get around to the season, it's going to be really good. You know, that's one thing you learn as you talk to the ball players. how much teamwork means. You, know, you have to get along with your teammates on and off the field and have to be able to communicate to get the job done. Well, what's coming up in Countdown to Kickoff? Well, we're going to take a look at the Buccaneer team photographers. We'll also join Dave Logan, who has talked to some of the Buccaneer fans this past week. That and a whole lot more coming up on this live edition of Countdown to Kickoff. J.D. Power & Associates, a name synonymous with excellence in the research and review of quality in the... You know, we can talk all we want about these Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but one of the opinions that counts most is uh, you folks, the people that pay the prices see the, uh, to get in the ball games and help out with some of these guys' salaries. Well, you all remember Dave Logan, the former Buccaneer defensive lineman. He's been with us the past couple of weeks. And tonight, Dave joins us with you, the fans, on your thoughts about this year's edition of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Over the past several weeks on Countdown to Kickoff, the question of just how good the 1990 Tampa Bay Buccaneers are has been mentioned several times. Now we've talked to players, coaches, the owner, even members of the media. Tonight, we'll have a chance to hear from some individuals who sometimes can play a very important role in just how successful the Buccaneers can be. I'm a, sort of a pessimistic Bucs fan, really, but I just, there's something different about them this year that seem to have a lot more excitement about them, a lot more zip. And it's just a matter of everybody works together and, and you got to have a little bit of luck. They had a little bit of bad luck last year. I think they're going to go all the way. Super Bowl. <laughs> in my heart and in my soul, I do believe they, they can and they will. They will do it. God bless them, I think they could. Can the Tampa Bay Buccaneers recapture the Central Division title and return to the playoffs for the first time since 1982? That seems to be the consensus among the people in the Tampa Bay area. But only time will tell whether or not they can accomplish this feat. 
Well, well, thanks, Dave. You know, they said if I stayed behind this yellow line, I'd be okay, but we're <laughs> getting surrounded by Seahawks here, so I hope everything is going to be okay. You know, you've probably watched countless uh, football games or any other sport on television, and if you, if you read the newspapers, you always see those fine still photographs in the newspapers. Well, you know, every team has a team photographer. And tonight, we'd like to introduce you to the couple that handles that chore for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rogan Airborne. This may be the way you're used to seeing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a television broadcast which utilizes several cameras from different positions, similar to tonight's broadcast. Or maybe you're used to seeing the Buccaneers on a newscast through the eye of one videographer with a minicam. But chances are, if you pick up a magazine or a Buccaneer brochure, you'll see something like this. Still photographs taken by Buccaneer team photographer, Bob Allen. It's a real kick. Very few people can do it. Uh, it takes a lot of skill. You know, everyone thinks that all you got to do is pick up a camera, aim it, and let it go. And it's not like that. You've got to know the game. You've got to know what to shoot. A fixture on the Tampa Bay sideline, Allen has been with the Bucks since their inception. As a true Buccaneer fan, little escapes his eye during a play, and a comment is only a whistle away. He stepped out about the two-yard line. He didn't score. They'll call it back. They're starting the tip. Watch. They have a reversal. The runner's knee hit out of bounds. It's a good call. The Bucks' 15-year history has been a roller coaster, to say the least. But the first few years were especially hard for Allen. He came to the Bucks in 1976 from the Miami Dolphins. He still wears his 17-0 Super Bowl ring. He earned as the team photographer, but there's no mistaking where his loyalty lies. You know, from 17-0 to 2 to 26, it's a, it's a real high and a real low, but you knew the team was going to come around. Uh, in five years, the Bucks were in the championship, which the Dolphins weren't. So you can't complain about the Bucks. They play good ball. Eh? Back in Miami, Allen has a photo studio that specializes in weddings and parties. The business pays the bills, but Buccaneer football is his joy. It's a real charge shooting this stuff and printing this stuff. But when you send it out and the magazine accepts it and they publish it, and, you know, I travel all around the country and doing the football, and we meet all these photographers on the sidelines, and they all say, it's a great shot. You had a good picture of this, a good picture of that, and a great job. So it's a real charge. Just like the business back home, working the sidelines is a family affair. At games, he's joined by his wife, Sylvia. I taught